Good evening and good night, everyone. This is update for April 29, 2022, day 65 of the war, end of the date update. Let's start with strategic update. Ukraine continues attempts to hit um, military and energy infrastructure targets on the Russian side, specifically in the neighboring regions of Russia, which is Brands here, Kursk, Belgorod. Voronezh is a little bit too far. We heard about the attempts to do though yesterday, but it's essentially focused on those three regions. <clears throat> Ukraine is using rockets to do that or UAVs, and uh, the attacks uh, clearly targeted only at military installation and energy infrastructure. At the same time, Russian side is claiming that Ukraine is shelling civilian villages and peaceful, um, ob um, peaceful assets, which we believe is not true. And in return, in retaliation, we've learned that Russia was shelling some, some villages here somewhere in the uh, Sumer region of Ukraine. We don't know details. I think it's not it's not that important which which village was shelling. It just tells us that there is build up uh, for Kazus Valley on the Russian side eventually, as we believe that given the current situation and inflow of new weapons from the West, Russia will have no choice but to declare formal war in Ukraine and have a mobilization effort throughout the country. Uh, next item on uh, next next topic uh, to discuss in, in terms of strategy is Ukraine start uh, to feel the pain from Russian attacks and the destruction of its railroad infrastructure. We seeing that shortages, uh, se uh, severe shortages of fuel, they were always there from the beginning of the war. Then it was never a perfect situation with the fuel, but the shortage, so shortages becoming more acute. So that's a result of destruction of those locomotive depots and specifically reduction in the number of power trains that move the fuel around the country. Now let's move, let's look at the front lines. And as a, as a heads up for those impatient, <clears throat> there is not much change in the front line. There is intensive fighting going on, but there is very little changes so far. Uh, so let's start in a clockwise fashion. We'll start from the north, from the Kharkiv front line. Let's look what's going on there. <clears throat> As we mentioned uh, yesterday, Ukrainian uh, forces pushed a little bit, squeezed a little bit out. Russian forces, and we mentioned before that mostly, even though we've been showing here all of these different Russian, regular uh, Russian units here, it appears that the, uh, the very first um, front line is meant by the force conscripts from uh, the Donetsk region and Luhansk region, and they have very low fighting capabilities. And that's probably why Ukrainian side was able to uh, to conquer those couple of villages here and here. So that's, there is nothing new here, the same situation. Let's now look at a little bit towards south at the uh, a zoom bridgehead, we identified new unit here, 38 Brigade. So the actually capture of the uh, village of Zavoti and Velika Kamashavaha was done by 38th Brigade here. And we're also hearing that it's not fully, fully under control of the Russian troops, that the southern part is still uh, under control uh, of Ukrainian forces there. Uh, there is no other updates here uh, with respect to changes, territorial gains, Russian territorial gains on this bridgehead, otherwise ever six table here. There are more updates here, but they are unconfirmed from Russian side, and we don't have any independent verification of any other confirming evidence that those changes happen. So what Russian side and is claiming is that they captured the village of Yampil here and uh, the other one that they captured village of Krimki and village called Alexandrovka. We don't see it here because of the scale of the map, but essentially this really means that this, this area was cleared up of Ukrainian troops 
in the in here as well. So what's really happening is that the the bridgehead, this Ukrainian bridgehead, becoming really you know, relatively small in size. And if what Russian side is claiming is true, then it's probably going to be cleared up in the next several days, probably four or five days. So this is, as we just want to mention it again, this is unverified information from Russian side that's not verified by any other sources. So there we should take it with a sort of, uh, a grain of salt and we'll see if that becomes true in the coming days. Okay, let's keep moving to the next uh, to the next section of the front line. Okay, let's now keep moving. We're going to look at the tip of Donbass salient. And I just want to explain one more time because there were questions in the comments. This is Donbass salient, you see. That's a Donbass salient. And this is what Russian troops are trying to cut and encircle Ukrainian, Ukrainian forces inside of this salient. So let's just look now at the top of it, which is the town of Severodonetsk and Rovizhne. Let's see what's going on there. <laughs> so the situation here is the same. There's no changes. So essentially from what we're learning that attacks on Severodonetsk and Rubizhna are carried out by the Second Army Corps ex almost exclusively. There is not much support from actual ra regular Russian troops here. So uh, let's keep moving a little bit south. So we're kind of going to the well, uh, to the town of Popasna here. There's nothing new here again. There are only, you know, information that the fighting is going on in the village of Rehove, which mostly under Russian control, but there are, it, it's not the, under total Russian control at this point. So we're going to go a little bit even more south just to show this is, you know, this is the, um, Severodonetsk is there in the north. So now we're kind of going a little bit more south because it's kind of the same front line here. So again, Popasna is being under continuous attack without much progress. So just a mid grinder and obviously heavy casualties for both sides there. Uh, let's continue to the next uh, section of front line. This, this section here, we're not covering because there is not much of active fighting only shelling in this area so it's relatively quiet right now let's look at the front line straight west of Donetsk down the city of Donetsk so here again you know as usual attacks on Avdiivka attempts to break through here by the Russian forces again and then another area is Mar Marinka again this you know, desire to break through Ukrainian defensive lines of unsuccessful and pressure on Nova Mikhailovka. So nothing really changes. It's actually very impressive how consistent uh, Russian forces are in attacking the same areas, which obviously creates significant advantages for the Ukrainian defenses. As you know, you you know where they're going to be attack is coming from. You prepared. So it's much easier to fend it off. So let's continue to the next one. And another important section of the front line is we're going to look at this, what we call the Parisia front line. But specifically, we're going to look at this more eastern section of it, which is more important than anything, because that's part of the southern pincer that the Russian side is trying to build so far. And um, oh, and as a side note, uh, so before we forget this, from what we're learning, all of these troops, main regular Russian uh, troops around Mariupol are being pulled off from the front lines. We believe that they just gonna be resting, similar to Kyiv West and Kyiv East group, due, due to heavy casualties. We don't think they're going to the the Parisian front line because they they. They suffered very heavy losses, that's for sure, especially 810th Naval Infantry Brigade. So at this point, they probably off sort of off the map for some time. So what happened here is the the, the encirclement here is being held by the um, by the troops from the occupied uh, region, Donetsk, uh, occupied uh, Ukrainian region. 
region in, in Donetsk. So this is similar to situation near Kharkiv here, where sort of second grade troops are holding this encirclement because Russian side needs first grade troops elsewhere and specifically to carry out the tax. So they just use second grade troops to just kind of block off Ukrainian fighters in Mariupol and specifically in Azovstal. Okay, sorry for this kind of deviation, but now let's go back to actually the stretch of the front line here, the Parisian front line, and we call it Eastern section of the front line here. Again, no changes here, no major advances for the Russian side. You know, they, they did some progress, they made some they had some initial success about three or four days ago when they built the salient, but so far they were not able to exploit that. So they got stalled here. Even though Ukrainian troops that are fighting them here are also not the strongest one, but they're probably much, very strongly motivated. So they, they lack equipment, but they don't lack in motivation. So that's probably what counters strengths russians russia advantage in the weapons and the gen general organizational advantage obviously there is no question that um, russian units function as a system much better than than let's say this ukrainian militia brigades that's for sure but the motivation really offsets those weaknesses of the ukrainian militia and helps them to 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 defend and but at heavy at the cost of heavy losses obviously so there is no news here the same situation uh, frontline situation there was pressure from russian side again on stronghold of gulaipola but that's probably going to be similar situation to avdivka and similar to marinka west of donetsk it's going to be just never ending desire to to conquer this place from the russian side then the other strongholds here if now we're looking at the whole stretch of the zaporizhia front line so this we we're looking at this one the sort of eastern portion of it now we're going to look the whole thing so as you as you can see defensive position is built around strong uh, strongholds one is kaminsky and it's protecting directly zaporizhia which is major industrial hub so that's this one, then Arikhiv, and there were Russian attempts uh, to attack this, this town a couple of days ago with some initial success, but they were repelled here. Then Gulaipola is another third stronghold, and then another one is Velika Novosilka. So this is kind of like line of four major strongholds here, and then there are smaller ones and some villages here. So as you can see, Russian troops ma managed to build this wedge here between Velika Novosilka and Hulaipola. But so far the, this, pro this progress has been stalled. Okay, now let's keep going. Um, now we're going to look at the situation in on the, let's call it Kherson bridgehead here. And let's see, which again, we just want to remind for, for those viewers, those who are new, that the essence of this bridgehead is that it's it's sort of for the future so that Russian troops can attack several targets. First of all, they can attack Riveri, which is another very, very important industrial hub that remains in Ukrainian control. Also, another um, direction is Odessa, extremely important for Russia, and as well as obviously creating a bridge to Transnistria. And, um, and, and finally, it protects already the territorial gains and specifically this channel that brings fresh water to Crimea and makes Crimea possible the way it is right now in terms of its economy and its population size and actually support also of the military bases there because since uh, its conquest from Ukraine in 2014 it was heavily militarized so let's now look at what's going on here um, on this Kherson bridgehead northern parts is the same and the point is that russian troops don't have enough troops to continue pressure here so they just the, the strategic they, they basically on the strategic defense here in this whole area so uh and especially so in this northern part where as you can see it's a lot of territory 
and most of the Russian troops are concentrated on this on this part of the bridgehead, defending Kherson and the bridges here. That's the most critical part of the bridgehead. If push come to show, they probably will easily retreat from this northern part because this is just it doesn't you know there is a lot of territory as you can see big perimeter and they don't have much forces there the only key points here are this bridge here in nova kahovka and this bridge here near near Kherson. those will be defended very staunchly by russian troops but so far after uh if you remember yesterday they managed to capture village of tavris because there is no other progress here it's all more or less stable okay that's it for tonight thanks again for watching and until tomorrow bye bye